In this video, we're going to learn about the unget C function in C. The unget C function allows us to push a character onto an input stream. This can be useful in situations where we would like to peek ahead by a single character, such as when reading streams of packets or parsing, as it avoids the overhead of creating and working with an input buffer array. So let's go over an example of using unget C. The first thing we'll do is open up a file and read each character using fgetc, and then we'll introduce ungetc after. So first we'll say file star file to make a file pointer variable. We'll open up the file called file.txt using fopen. And the second argument is going to be r here because we're gonna open the file in reading mode. Now if fopen fails, it's gonna return null. So we'll check for that. If the file equals null, we're gonna print f error opening file and we're gonna return one. We'll return one instead of returning zero because returning one is a signal to the shell, to the terminal that something went wrong in the execution of our program. Next, we'll read in one character at a time and we'll make a loop to do that. We'll say in C while true. Now, because I'm gonna use this true constant value here, I'm gonna to have to include stdbool.h. So include stdbool dot h. So next we'll read in each character. So we'll say c is equal to f get c file if f eof file or f error file is true, we're done reading the file and we'll break. Otherwise what we'll do is just print out the character. So we'll say printf percent c and we'll put the character c. Then when we're done, we'll print out a new line. So we'll say printf new line. And then finally, we'll close our access to the file. So here we have a typical way to read a file where we're opening up the file, we're going through each character in the file until we reach the end. We're gonna print out each character and we'll also print out a new line. And the file right now looks like this. We just have E, B, C, D, E, F, G. So let's compile and run this program and test it out. So GCC, we'll compile it here, we'll run it, and we get A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, what if we use unget C? So unget C is gonna push a character back onto the input stream. So when I use the term input stream, I'm not referring to the actual file.txt on disk. When file.txt is read in, there's going to be an input stream in memory, in RAM. That's where the character is going to be pushed back onto. So using unget C is not gonna modify file.txt. It's going to modify the input stream of characters that's created when we open and read from file.txt. So what we'll do is say if C is equal to E, then we're going to call unget C with the character Z as the first argument, followed by file. Otherwise, we'll print F the character. So what's gonna happen here is that we have these characters and our input stream, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We're gonna read A, read B, read C, read D. And then when we get to character E, we are gonna read in that character. So F get C is gonna read in that character and store it into C. But then here, we're gonna check. And if C is equal to E, we're gonna call unget C with Z and file. And what that's going to do is push this character Z back onto this input stream here. And we'll now have ZFG. The program will continue. We will now read in Z next. And we'll output Z followed by F and G. So we're going to end up with A, B, C, D, Z, F, G as our output. Because all these characters here, we just read them in and output them. Then when we hit that one special character E, instead of outputting it, we push Z onto the input stream. Then we continue the loop and we're gonna output ZFG. Let's try it out. So we compile it, we run it, and we get A, B, C, D, Z, F, G. So that's how unget C works. Now one thing we could always do when reading in an input stream is store all the data into a buffer. So for example, 
we could make a very large character array called buffer. And we could read everything into that buffer. And then afterwards, we could analyze it however necessary. The problem with this is you have an overhead. You're now creating this large buffer to deal with your input. There are some situations like parsing or reading streams of packets, where if we can look ahead just a single byte, we can save ourselves from having to create this buffer. Those are the types of situations where unget C is going to be useful in comparison to something like a buffer or using fseek. So let's go over an example of that. Let's actually create a parsing situation. And it's going to be a simple one. But in this file here, we're going to have a number, an operator, and then another number there. And we're going to say that we want to read into a character array the first number. We want to stop at this operator here, plus. But we want to leave the rest of the stream intact to be parsed by some other piece of code, some other function perhaps, that's gonna handle the rest of the parsing of this input. So what we'll do now is create a different example here. We'll still open up file.txt. This time when we read it though, we'll do it a bit differently. So we'll say int c, and we'll have a character array for storing the first operand. We'll say op1. 256. Then we'll say int i is equal to zero. And what we're going to do is read in this first number into the op1 character array. We're going to use i as our index into this character array as we read in each character. But what we're going to do is once we encounter the plus character, we're going to actually put it back onto the input stream. So we'll say while true, c is equal to f get c file if we reach the end of the file or there's an error reading the file again we're going to break otherwise what we'll do is check to see if c is plus so if c is plus then we're going to call unget c and we're going to put the character C back onto the input stream. So we're going to put the plus back. Otherwise, we're still reading the number. And what we'll do is store the next character into the op1 character array at index i. And we're going to increment i so that way we continue to store the rest of the number at the next position in this character array. Finally, when we're done, we're going to put a null terminator character on to the end of this string we've been building into the op1 character array. We can print out op1, so we'll say printf op1 percent s backslash n op1. One important thing I've got to add here is the break. After we detect this character here, the plus, we're going to put it back onto the input stream. But then we're going to do a break and we're going to stop reading at that point. So we're only going to store into op1 that first operand, which should be one, two, three. So we'll save this. We'll do a compilation and then we'll run it. And we get op1 is one, two, three. So we've successfully read in that first operand. Now what's interesting though, is that the remaining input stream will contain plus. So if another piece of code wanted to continue parsing this content from here, it would have that plus character there. So even though we read it from the input stream, we put it back onto the input stream, effectively allowing us to peek ahead a single character and read a character without consuming it, we could say. So if we said here car rest 256, we could read in the rest of the input stream just to make sure that plus character is there. So we'll say, f gets rest 256 and file. Then we're going to do a printf of rest percent s backslash n and rest. And we're going to actually output the rest string, which is going to be the rest of the file contents in this case. So we'll save this, 
do a recompilation and run it. And we notice that the rest of the content there includes that plus character. And that's just interesting because we read the character here, but we put it back onto the input stream here. That allowed us to peek ahead a single character without actually consuming that character. That is useful in situations like parsing. I'll post some links in the description to others that have described using this function in particular situations. Hopefully this has been a helpful introduction to unget C in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.